truths and I mean two two lies in yeah. one. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 What's up, guys? Welcome to another episode of the QSC Play Out Loud DJ Discussion. I am your host, Kristen Wilson of RDJ Rocks, uh, owner of the all-female DJ multi-op based out of Orlando, Florida, industry educator, DJ business guru. Today, I've got my ladies with me, DJ Jess. Um, I've got DJ B Selecta and DJ Run That. I'm super excited today, guys, because as you kind of heard, we were talking behind the scenes um, about kind of what our format's going to be today. We're going to do a little uh, two lies, one truth game. Yeah, I'm getting a nod. I'm getting a nod. Um, you know, it's funny because we always talk about, you know, the present, our struggles, triumphs, what the future might look like and things like that. Maybe, you know, how we and so we want to kind of like pause right there and kind of rewind. Uh, Jess is calling it the Way Back Wednesday. So we want to talk about who influenced, influenced us, how we got here, and kind of things like that. Um, and, and we want to make it a little bit fun today. So real quick, I want to pass it over to my ladies to do a, a quick intro, and then we'll jump in. So I'll toss it over to my right. Th that way. Sorry. DJ, run that. Take it over. <laughs> Hello, I'm Michelle Miller, DJ Run That. I'm a solo op based out of Northern California in a tiny town in Humboldt County. I love playing all music, all kinds of events. I get such a variety of events. I love mentoring others. I'm a self-published, best-selling author on how to start a DJ business. And this year I launched the Royal Queens Rising podcast where I feature female DJs from all around the world. I'm so happy to be here and join this discussion with these amazing ladies and that's it <laughs> thank you michelle all right jess take it over hey dj jess jessica mckelvey i am a solo operation dj based out of pittsburgh pennsylvania and i specialize in weddings and private events and now i think i can say i am a virtual presenter because i presented with the dj and tv that was my first presentation that i spoke Yay, oh my god same yeah. Kristen and Michelle. So it was, I love it. And I want to keep going. Yes. All right. And then we have West Coast DJ B Selecta. Yes, yes, y'all. It's B Selecta, LA based. I like this solo op DJ thing. I've never heard that before. I'm a solo op DJ. Um, <laughs> all events. I love to say I'm your love and vibe ambassador. Um, music is my life. I play anywhere. I play all the things. And um, I'm just really happy to be here with all these ladies. Whoop, whoop. Okay, whoop, whoop. so you know we love to kick it off with something positive, guys. Um, so let's revisit what's good. What's good? What was positive? Something good that happened in the last um, seven days? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pass it over to Jess first. Well, this was pretty cool. Um, I got I reached out to buy a radio station that I used to have a show at, and the guy asked me to do a few voiceovers for a program that they have coming up. So I went to my father's studio at where I grew up yesterday and did the voiceover super quick, nailed it out, and I loved it. It felt so good. And then afterwards, he sent me a text message, and he was like, Jessica, you should do this professionally. You're better than a lot of the, the DJs I hear on the radio and the TV. And I was like, oh, dad, because all I want is my dad's approval. <laughs> So oh, that was, I love that. seriously, so thanks, Dad. If you're watching. Oh, <laughs> I love that. All right, DJ, run that. What's good? So this week, like we mentioned, we um were part of the DJ and TV virtual DJ Expo, and I gave a presentation on branding and personality branding and standing out from your competition. And I would say that was good. That was stretchy. Like um stepping into being a speaker this last year, starting with Mobile Bee and doing these QSC talks. So that was good. There was a lot of good information. Um, it was challenging. Oh boy. But you know, we did it. We did it. So hands up for that. I feel like there was like easy parts of it recording, but then like it's hard because I feel like my prepping for recording something virtually it seemed to be a little bit less stressful than doing it live, but then the actual recording part, because I felt like I had to record myself 400 times. And then I'm like, your intro sucks, your intro sucks, your intro sucks. And finally, I was just like, you know what? Whatever comes out of my mouth is happening. Let's go. Mm -hmm. That's how I did it. Exactly yeah. how I did it. I only did like a half of a run through and then I just ran it and yeah. sent it to my team to edit it. Yeah, <laughs> I love it. Brandy, what about you? What's good? 
Hmm, what's good? This week's been kind of like pretty stable. Um, Work-wise, you know, I got another women's event that I booked it's coming up next month. So those always make me excited when I'm able to support local women in the community doing their thing and they want to support me. So I'm excited about that. My in-laws flew in, so I finally got some help with my kids. Oh, that's good. That's right. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> and that that's it. That's it for me this week, my loves. I love it. So for me, I went back to our office slash warehouse for the first time. So that was very exciting. Um, if my team is watching, they'll tell you I definitely cried at least two times. Um, and Tuesday, we spent the majority of the day kind of just like cleaning things out, rearranging. We're kind of re-envisioning what we want the office space to look like now because the girls and I have kind of figured out a way to work from home virtually. We've all built you know, our home offices. So I'm like kind of rethinking, okay, do I want to go back like into the office or do I want to reimagine that space since we still have the lease for four and a half years to be more of like, let's have showcases and like monthly meetups. And, you know, maybe it's the virtual stream office for my girls, not just for me. So that was really exciting. Um, and then I started working out again this week. So yay, bike rides and working out. Um, so yeah, so that's kind of new with me. Nice. Awesome. Okay, so I want to jump right in because I'm super excited. So we're calling this Way Back Wednesday. That's going to be our phrase. And what I want to do is kind of tie this to the um, um, the two, two t remind me, lazy. It's two truth, one lie, or two lies, one truth. <laughs> two, two lies, lies. One two lies, one truth. <laughs> I'm literally going to mess this up every time. Two lies, one truth. <laughs> And every time you say way back Wednesday, can I go zoom? <laughs> sure, I don't care. We're just going with it. We're just going with it. Okay, so we're going to start off um, not with the game. We're going to start off by one word. And I want you guys to each give me one word to describe your first year of DJing along with what year it was. Oh. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Think yeah. about it. Think about it. Kristen, do you have a word? Do you want to start? Yeah. So first word that came to the top of my head was I was terrified. I was absolutely terrified. It might have been 2009. And I'm looking at the mixer going, oh, my God, there's so many buttons. I don't even know which one to push. <laughs> 2009, you said? Yes. When you officially started? I think my word, the fr like I, I wanted to kind of get into it and think of a really great word that just encapsulated everything of that year. It was in 2003. And my word is uneducated. <laughs> Just uneducated. Dude, that's a good word because maybe that's why I felt so dang terrified. Uneducated. Uneducated. That's so sweet. Run down. Well, I, or Brandy, go. Okay. Um, so I think I'm 2009 too. Circa 2009. I didn't know what circa meant this week, by the way. I finally asked somebody. So if you don't know, let me know. I'll tell you what it means. But anyway, um, <laughs> it means time, approximately. It's approximately that time. I'm like, what does circa mean anyway? Is it, what is that? Anyway, so approximately 2009, I think, is when I started. And I was going to pick... Um, terrified or anxiety as my first word. But since we've done that, I'm going to say exhilarating because I do remember doing a set that I had prepped because I prepped sets at the beginning because I'm scared on my life. And, um, and it went off. And when I was done, I went outside and I felt like I could like fly. So exhilarating is going to be my word. Listen, at least you guys had mixers like legit. When I started, I should have said the word bear share because I was ripping music off of bear share. <laughs> I had, you know, it was like this old like, dual CD player and like a mic that like hooked into a USB, like legit was not. I was, well, first, I was first of all, first of all, the person I was trained by, I was still on a CD mix too. So I was, I literally had CDs that I was put, so at yeah. least you were digital. Yeah. Amazing. Truth, truth. Yeah. Michelle, or D D D you on that? <laughs> so 2009 also, which is interesting. And my word, well, I wanted to say nervous, but it was also exciting. So those are like, those go together. They yeah. do. I'm sorry, I didn't pick one. <laughs> I think I was more nervous. 
Yeah, yeah, I can totally relate to that because I feel like when I was trying to think of my word, like terrifying and exhilarating all at the same time. So I feel yeah. like we're kind of like all on the same page. Yeah. And it feels the same. I think I've heard that, right? Excitement and fear. Or, yeah. you know, it's the same feeling. It's just a different word. Yep. It's like the reframe, you know, when, like anything new is going to be exciting, but it's going to be scary. So instead of saying, this is scary, this is, this is terrifying, just be like, this is exciting. Yeah, <laughs> yeah like, totally. Uh, I feel like yeah. some of those same feelings I still get, and I've, I've transformed them into butterflies, which turn into energy. Ooh, I like, I like that. that. Mine just turns into uh, acid reflux. <laughs> <laughs> but it's really comforting. It's comforting to know that, you know, everybody else feels that way. Because yeah. even me, I was like, why am I still getting so nervous sometimes? I'm over this feeling of like, <gasps> I hope everything goes well. But, you know, as you guys know, 8,000 things cannot go well. So it's like, yeah. No. no. Speaking of eight thousand things, how about we talk about first gigs, okay? And this is where this is where I'm going to introduce. Help me. Let's <laughs> try get it right. Two lies, one truth. <laughs> yes, you got it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, go me. And it's so fun. Hold on. Can we just say it was so funny because? So I just finished binge watching one Netflix show, right? And now I'm like, crap. I have to get back to work because Florida's open and I'm getting busy again. And so I'm asking my friends, like you know, what Netflix show can I start watching again when I have like downtime? And someone said Shit's Creek. And the last episode, I think it was on, I'm only on episode three and it literally talks about the two, two lies, one truth. And then oh. boom, we talk about this today. So thank gosh I saw it last night. Cause I would have been like, I can't with this. Yeah. Um, <laughs> okay. So back to the topic. So first gig. So uh, Brandy, I'm going to kick it over to you. So okay. I want you to give us two lies and one truth, and we have to guess which one it is. Uh, it's my first heard, gig. As your first, first gig. gig. Yeah. Where your it? first ever gig was. Okay. You guys give ready? Me, mix it up. Give us two lies, one truth. And if and before we answer, I want to see if anybody in the comments can answer too. So yeah, Ooh, let's, yeah let's play. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. All right. Two lies, one truth. My first gig was DJing for my best friend's spin studio for her spin class. My okay. first gig was DJing at a small little lounge on Sunset Boulevard called Isla Cantina. Ooh, my, first, <laughs> my first gig was DJing my niece's 10th birthday party. Ooh. Okay, what do you guys think before we start? Because I'm like, I'm like, number two is like really sexy, and I'm kind of hoping that's the gig. You know what I mean? But, but like, at the end of the day, what DJ who just starts off gets a sexy gig as gig number one or two or your first year for that matter? So, what do you guys think? Two. I'm going with my gut. I'm, um, yeah, same. Same with Casey Hasty. I'm going with number two, Isla Cantina. Like, okay, but like, I kind of want to like not vote with you guys and be like number one because I know how much she loves like workout classes. So I'm going to vote one. Which is why she put that in there. But okay, fine. Oh, wait, wait, wait. We're voting on what is actually the truth, right? Correct. Yeah. Okay. 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 I'm going to vote number one. Okay. Riley James McKelvey says number one. Blair says three. Oh, boy. Okay. What'd you say, Michelle? I mean, three. Sorry. <laughs> no. It's number one. It's number one. You oh, right. come on. Yeah, but they were all in my. They were. Those were like my. I. I'm a horrible liar. So all of them were my gigs, but the first one was my very first gig, very first one. That all happened in the first year. And that's oh the my gosh. Or is that when you prepped the set and it went super well and you were feeling exhilarating? Yeah, Isla Cantina. I thought like I could fly. When I was done is the cantina, I walked outside and like screamed at the top of my lungs on Sunset Boulevard because I couldn't believe what just happened. I couldn't believe I was on Sunset Boulevard. I couldn't believe I just DJed a lounge and it went off. I lost I lost my mind. It was amazing. That's so cool. That's yeah. awesome. So do you feel like, you know, with your first gig and even your first year, were you in a financial place where it truly was supporting you or how long did it take before you got to that point? You know, I've been so lucky because my husband has always kind of carried the weight of our 
baseline uh, needs. So I never felt that pressure. So I never really, it would, I would have been in trouble my first year for sure. I wasn't, I wasn't pulling in enough. I was doing gigs for free for 50 bucks an hour. I DJed a kid's pizza party, you know? So I was taking anything and everything to, to learn and to get out there and just experience it. So I didn't know where I was going with everything. I knew kind of what I thought of, but so no, my first year, there was no way I was making enough money to survive. No way. Yeah. What about you, Jess? Yeah. What's your first gig? My first gig was um, in, in college. I was going to be, I had a, um, it was a communications degree and I wanted to be an event planner. But anyways, I turned 21. I started going to the local bar. There was like four bars in Edinburgh. It's in Northern Pennsylvania, kind of near Canada, a lot of snow. Um, and I would go to the bar and dance and my sorority sister was the DJ and I was just requesting a lot of music. And she goes, well, you like music, you should be a DJ. So it was Edinburgh Hotel. I was one of the resident DJs out of three and I did, I think it was four hours. Uh, I got paid $40 and I got a lot of free beer. And <laughs> um, yeah, that was just to, just to, to make my own money. You know, I, I, I didn't really need extra money to live off of, but it was nice to have my own money. And then I worked my way up to be, you know, one of the top DJs there that kind of did the schedules for everybody else and picked what nights I wanted to work. But yeah, that's where I was. <laughs> it was <Amazing>. interesting. <laughs> That's awesome. Michelle, what about you? I can't remember my first gig, but I know that it was with my husband because he um, would let me follow him around and DJ a little bit here and there. But I do clearly remember my first gig by myself. And it was driving like an hour out to the ocean for my friend's birthday party. And I was so worried, like, if I couldn't set things up right, or if anything went wrong, like I would have no one to turn to. And if there was an issue with the, um, the, you know, the setup, like I wouldn't, I wouldn't know what to do, but it all went fine. <laughs> yeah. I think, I, you know, I think back to my, my days and I'm like, okay, I could give two different scenarios on scenarios on this one. When I was DJing my way through college, which I had always done, private events or weddings. I never, I've never even done the clubs. Um, and that was just my way to, you know, I'd take a few gigs a month to help pay whatever. But then I specifically remember when I uh, was working in the corporate world, I'd only been in it for about three years and I still DJed on the weekends. I absolutely loved it. And I got to the point where it was okay. When I had enough future bookings on the books, to be like, okay, I could pay my half the rent with my husband at the time. I don't think we were engaged yet. And I could afford ramen noodles for dinner. I was like, babe, can I quit my job? <laughs> and if you, if you guys ever see Mark out and about, ask him about that because I'm still so inquisitive of like, babe, like what did you, in my mind, I'm like, how could my partner be like, okay, it's okay to quit your job. You know what I mean? And so I asked him, did you have any doubt in your mind of where this could go. He goes, absolutely not. I've always believed in you from day one. And I think him believing in me more than me believing in myself has always been like my driving force. So mm -hmm. that was me. I quit, I quit my nine to five with health, health insurance and 401k. Um, when I at least had enough on the books to, you know, pay the rent and Raymond nudes, nudes. <laughs> love the nudes. All good with the nudes. I just, awesome. needed cover, I just needed to cover nudes and rent and I was good, bro. I've never heard it called Raymond. <laughs> Raymond. I it was Raymond. 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 Is that Raymond. a Florida thing? <laughs> I don't know, but I think I mess it up every time because you're right. I think it is ramen, but it's no. Raymond. I want you to drop an album and your first EP is going to be called um, Raymond and Rent. And I just want you to just feel <laughs> That's it. the best. Raymond and Rent. Send nudes. <laughs> That's awesome. Oh oh, I can't. Okay. Okay. All right. So I'm going to, I'm going to switch it up a little bit. Uh, we've got a DJ mentor here that we are so excited. Uh, DJ run that. So um, you obviously talk to DJs across the U S and mentor them and inspire them and coach them and things like that. So in regards to mentors, uh, another two lies, one truth, DJ run that, give it to us. Yes. Okay, so my first mentor ever was an EDM DJ from London. 
Um, my first DJ mentor was YouTube. My first DJ mentor was my husband. Oh, okay. I, okay. I, okay. It, I'm excited because I really want to give my answer and I can't even MC right now. Okay. So if you guys are watching, which one do you think is the truth? The EDM from London, YouTube, or her husband? One, two, or three in the chat. Go. And then keep the music. Way back Wednesday. <laughs> Way back. Uh, I don't want to guess because I really know Michelle well and I know which one it is. So I'm just going to kind of phase out real quick. Okay. I feel like I'm I I I'm the only one literally guessing because I think Kristen knows. You too. know Kristen? I d I legit don't know, but I'm I kind of want to I want to make an educated guess. And Casey's I'm, in the chat saying EDM DJ from London, which that's sexy to me, and I really kind of want that to be the answer. But <laughs> I think I'm gonna go with her husband. Yeah, I was gonna pick her husband too. But let's make it fun. I'll pick number two. I'm gonna say YouTube. <laughs> okay. okay, all right. All right, so it was my husband. He taught me, yeah. He still te tries to teach me if I let let me be teachable. <laughs> yeah. I think that's, that's awesome. awesome. I love it that your husband is also a DJ. That's such a great uh, connecting force to have in this type of industry. Yeah, yeah. has pros and cons. Like, did, like, tell us about you and him and how you got into that. Okay, so before we were ever a thing, um, I he was like one of the only, he was like the only DJ around and I always wanted to learn. So I, my friend hooked me up with like a little hangout session with them and uh, he was trying to teach me how to scratch. And I remember knocking the knob like right off. Like I was like aggressive. It went blind, <laughs> we lost it. Um, and and uh, that was like our first session. And then, you know, we were always friends and then we became an item. And then he started teaching me and taking me out. And, and it was it was great, but also like there came a point where like, I didn't want to, I, I felt it, like it was like criticism where I, we'd be out DJing and I wouldn't mix perfect. I'd be like impatient. And he'd come and tell me like, you really want to wait till the end of the hook or this or that. And I was like, I know. And then it got like really annoying <laughs> to be honest. And so um, there came a time where I was just like, I wanted to just DJ by myself. And then, then there came a time where we had to take turns DJing because we have kids. And then now it's like a special occasion when we get to play together and it's actually fun again. So there's definitely been different different phases of it and like it's cool because on a special occasion like new year's eve we can collaborate or on halloween or even we've dj'd on like valentine's day so it's kind of kind of funny because you're working but you're like it's sweet because you're with your partner so that's fun mm -hmm. I, I love that. that yeah that's awesome it's funny because if you okay so let's rewind i'm not going to talk about my first gig but i will talk about my first dj convention and uh, Mark was with me and I went and we were walking around you to trade show floor and things like that and people would walk up to us like they do everybody and you just introduce yourself right you know and you're getting to know people and they would literally walk right up to my husband and start a conversation as if I wasn't even there and then he would look at them and say I'm not the DJ she is and the look on their face what was that I don't know five six ish years ago when it was like i was the dj it was just mind-blowing and um he would say i don't even know how to turn on a microphone if you handed it to me <laughs> so things have definitely changed um and you know did that it, feel it, good Kristen? you know it, it, it was annoying at first because i'm like it it was so frustrating to be so young and the position that i was in and it it honestly just fueled me more to be like okay I see what's going on. I need to earn my place and I need to earn respect. And so that's what I did. Yeah. Go girl. Yeah. Love that. Um, do, do any of you guys have other mentors that you want to talk about? Um, I learned a lot. So I said YouTube for run that because I learned a lot off of the internet. I mean, I had a mentor. He was my husband's best friend and, um, his name is uh, NIC, the world famous NIC. He's a dope DJ and I'm so thankful for him because he started me off 
with the fundamentals. Like I started on records. I wish I would have started on true vinyl, but I started on control vinyl. But I'm glad that he did that. And so, but I watched DJ Angelo on YouTube for like a year. And he's amazing. If you guys he, haven't seen his tutorial videos, this is dude is amazing. Is yeah. He, he was at Kristen, he was at the DJ Collective. He was one of the guys that performed and he also uh, did some presentations. He had like a bald head. That's Super why I was dope. that was him. Was he the one that was finger drumming? He no. was yeah, no, that was Bucky. Oh, I, Roger. But he can do it. Oh, he Bucky's doing Bucky. that. So. Yeah. Yeah. DJ yeah. I mean, he had like a little bit of an accent. He performed the night they all did, but I think yeah. he's more like he's like his personality was kind of more low-key. Um yeah. He's yeah, a he's awesome. he is dope. He reminds me a lot of Jazzy Jeff because he is a turntableist, but he's also extremely musical. So it's mm -hmm. not just about the technique that he's doing. He's actually using the music like Jazzy Jeff does. And I I love the guy. So That's I watched all of his videos for like a year in my garage, just trying to beat juggle or scratch or whatever. So yeah, yeah. DJ okay. Angelo, shout out Angelo. <laughs> I, as far as a mentor for me, I wish I would have had one because I love it that you said that you learned on vinyl, you know, even though it was like simulated vinyl. That's, I wish I would have started out like that. I'm just, I, that's on my list of, of things to do. But as far as mentors, I had, no, I mean, I worked for companies and such and like, I'm not even going to get into that. But as far as mentors, the only time I ever connected with somebody uh, in the beginning, I mean, now I have all of these people that are in my life with different roles and Michelle, you know, I, I speak with her and another DJ, DJ Stardust, and we kind of mentor each other's mental health and goals and such. But it would be, and uh, Rhonda, you know him, DJ Pudgy from the San Francisco Bay Area. So when I had the opportunity to DJ in Mobile Beat, uh, in Las Vegas for Mobile Beat, I had to prep my first set. Now this was in 2018. Like that's, even though I've been DJing since 03, like that's when I prepped my first set was in 2018. Um, and he, I forget how we connected. I may have posted somewhere online and he reached out to me and completely Mr. Miyagi me the whole way through, like told me how to practice, you know, different tricks, told me how to relieve anxiety, listened to my set, gave me ideas, helped me with transitions. Like legit was there every step of the way. And he's still there for me today too. Um, you know, for someone that I can reach out to and such. So that would have been, that's my, that's definitely, it would be my, my mentor. For sure. Bro, you smashed up. <laughs> that set, by the way. I can't, thank you. It's so crazy because I'm at such a different skill level now that I look back and I'm like, it was so basic. You know, there was no tricks or anything. There was no like drumming of anything. It was no. all just like perfect songs with the right time. But, yeah, but I feel like we're all a critic. Like I was in that audience and then you came on and I, the energy electrified me and I'm like, I will walk up to this woman and I will meet her because she, as Rundat would say, queen. Thank you. <laughs> we had it when we first met. <laughs> I can't well, you know, believe that was only two years ago. I know, it's crazy. Yeah. So I've had a business mentor for five years and that's how I got into business mentoring. And she really, really helped me. Her name's Sasha Sterling and I'm still with her. We met today for two hours and like, she really helped me get out of my own way, find my voice. I didn't have a voice before her really, you know, I was, I was, I didn't, I had no confidence in speaking. I still feel like I'm learning how to talk. And even in my present, presentation uh yesterday like there was a couple mistakes and it's okay you know I don't beat myself up over it anymore like I know better and so really just having any type of mentor business support emotional support like like Jessica said we mentor each other's emotional well-being that's the key right there during during these present times is like having that support to help our mental, just knowing like we have a lot of similarities going on in our lives. Like we're experiencing some of the, some of the same stuff that we maybe haven't experienced before different feelings uh, about DJing and um, our future and everything. So like, it's really important for me to know I have that support system. I give a lot of credit to my business coach. Yeah. Gotcha. Mentors are awesome. Yeah. They're awesome. Do you have one? Did you have one Kristen? When I first started, um, no, I didn't. And it's really sad because I feel like I could have propelled so much further had I agreed, had a support system, a mentor and whatnot. I mean, thank goodness, you know, my actual life partner was 
at least the support that I needed to say you can do it, whatever, whatever you say I'm down with. Um, it probably wasn't until maybe four or five years ago, only from a business standpoint, because in my mind, you know, I really didn't know where where DJing was going to take me. It was just supposed to be the bridge that got me to the next spot, to be really honest. There was never an intention of I'm going to do this as a career. There was never the intention of I'm going to have a female DJ company. And for those of you who know where we are now, you would probably be really surprised that there none of this was intentional. It just kind of organically, whatever. We won't even go there. But, you know, I, I think every single point of every single year as we've progressed, I've always run into a situation where I'm like, oh, crap, I can't figure this out. You know, like I want to talk in a minute about all holy crap moments, but I feel like I've had one of those almost every single year leading up to now. And it's been like, well, crap, you know, we, we got to the point where I don't know how to manage the finances. So I need to find somebody to teach me how to do this. And so then I found, you know, a financial mentor. And then it was like, OK, crap, operationally, I can't handle logistics of this many DJs and this many events. So I'm like, OK, crap, I need somebody to mentor me in this. Um, and then, you know, I never really even worked on myself and my talents um, to be honest until really this last year, because I've always been so focused on giving what I know to other people. And so it wasn't until this last year where, you know, a part of these communities where it's like, you know, even Jess and I will share and I'm like, I'm, te I'm terrified to do this mix. How do I blend this? You know, or, you know, Dawson high, you know, will teach me something. Cause he's like FaceTimes me and he's like, let me show you what I learned. Or like, you know, Nick Spinelli came down and, and taught my team. So it, it's because of other people from across the U S that have, you know, taught me little things here and there because it, who has the time to really sit down however many hours a week and just give their time away for free. So, you know, I've kind of found these, these little, these little friendships and, and a lot of people really, you know? Yeah. You know, what's crazy you guys that I think about, like, let me ask you this. Did you know that you could be a career DJ? And this might be different based off of where we live, but did you know when you were younger that you could be a career DJ? When I say younger, I even mean college. No, you guys are saying no. Be select. I was wondering if you would say yes, because well, you're from Canada. So I was thinking L.A. might be different. Um, same. I had no clue that you could be a career DJ. And gosh, it's amazing. Right. And it's like where we are supposed to be. It's where we're supposed to be. And I wish that there was a program. Now, I know that there probably are some things being done now, but I mean, it didn't. it's not going to change anything. But it would have been beautiful if there was something that told us, hey, the events industry, you know, you can be a career DJ that it can be done. And then yeah. we kind of spearheaded this process a little bit and, you know, gotten somewhere a little quicker. Like, I don't want to look back and say I have regrets, but I'm hoping that there is education out there now that women or girls and boys know that you can be a career DJ, support your family, have a family, not have a family, whatever you want to do with it. And it works out and it's amazing. Like they need to get on that. <laughs> well, it's funny there's actually a couple. Sorry, go ahead. No, you go. Cause I was going to say one thing, but you go first. All I was going to say is there's actually a couple in LA. I mean, obviously it's LA, but there's a couple in LA that are really honing in on the entertainment industry and the different branches of the entertainment industry yeah. and showing people like, yeah, we can teach you how to DJ, but yes. we're going to teach you that there's actually a business here. And there's yeah. many different facets of this business where you can use those skills to be a career DJ. So there's places out here I know of that are doing that thankfully and some even focusing on females in the industry like the beat junkies and the ladies of sound super dope right cool. so that's but I, I never knew that stuff yeah never. well mm -hmm. and then when did open too because you know the university of central florida which is a college here that i'm an, an alumni on they have their Rosen School of Hospitality, which has always been focused on just hospitality in general. But it wasn't until the last few years that underneath, you know, UCF, you know, Rosen School of Hospitality, now they have an entertainment track where they literally go through. And it's it, same thing that V Selected just said. There's, you know, different avenues you can go down if you want it to be, a, you know, whatever. Um, and so I've even gone into some of those classes and spoke and just kind of told people my journey. Oh, so that's awesome. It's kind of cool because I feel like that never was a thing. And now it's just starting to come up. So, yeah, it's kind of cool. I love that. Yeah, because the face of music is different, right? Like there's the traditional instruments, but now there's a whole nother world. 
of instruments. A whole new world. <laughs> Girls <laughs> sing. Dang, you Girls got sing. Yeah. Well, in this other life, I was Carrie Underwood, but then that career worked out. Well. Uh, I just right, wanted so to say about that, though. So I feel like that's my calling. I wrote a book, How to Start a DJ Business. I created a digital course two years ago on how to start a DJ business. And my mobile beat presentation was how to go from hobby to business because starting out, it wasn't like it was a passion, it was a dream. And then, and then I started to realize, yeah, I can actually make money. People want to pay me. And oh, actually, and then I started like um, doing research, like, oh, what do people get paid in other areas? And like, oh, wow, you can actually make really good money. And like, it just kept going, growing and expanding. And it still is, there's so much to learn, like always. So I feel like that's been my calling is to help spread the word and partly why I wanted to connect with all the female DJs and do the Queens on Deck online show. And the podcast was to give us that platform and that space to share our stories, to inspire and educate others that and other females like, hey, look, you can do this. If yeah. I can do it. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. I think it's Love definitely it. been a um I don't want to say a long journey but definitely interesting right because we've all kind of been down different paths so I want to talk about lesson learned <laughs> and holy crap moments and this is where I want to throw it over to Jess so mm -hmm. let's do the two lies one truth once again <laughs> <laughs> okay um, so holy crap moments where something happened at a gig and you're just like holy crap um, okay, so one time at a gig, a girl spilled her entire beer on my laptop because I didn't play her request. One time at a oh. gig, a photographer fixed my controller five minutes before the ceremony. And one time at a gig, I forgot my wedding uniform and had to DJ a fancy wedding in stretch pants and a t-shirt. <laughs> oh my God. If she, if, first of all, I, I'm going to die if you pulled Brandy's uh, away and all those are true. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Watching, what do you think? So let's recap. What are the three again? So okay. So one time at a gig, a girl spilled her entire beer on my laptop because I didn't play her request. Okay, beer on laptop. Got it. One time at a gig, a photographer fixed my controller five minutes before the ceremony started. And one time at a gig, I forgot my wedding uniform and had to DJ a fancy wedding in stretch pants and a t-shirt. Oh, I'm torn between right. one and three. And a t-shirt. <laughs> I'm gonna go for one. I'm gonna go for one. I'm the voting beer. one. The beer. I'm voting okay. for the beer. I I have to vote last. Okay, so um, I'm gonna say three. You're gonna say the stretch <laughs> pants, okay? Yeah. Shout out to stretch pants. Love them. <laughs> Love them. <laughs> like, if I get my leg up. <laughs> stretch pants. <laughs> I really want to say three because like, I know that has probably happened, but for some reason, something is pulling me to say number two. Number two. Stop oh! it. Number two, this, so listen, like there's been so many holy crap moments. I know you can all recognize yes. that and remember that about yourselves. But um, I was, this was when I first started working with the DJ company and started turning more professional and um, basically no training, you guys. I had a Newmark Mix Track Pro that I was using that I had to connect, you know, obviously to an external mixer. And I had a wedding at this place called Phipps Conservatory. So beautiful, so fancy. Like I was doing the ceremony outside and then the wedding inside. And I just didn't know. I was uneducated. So I am trying to hook up my controller to play for the ceremony. And it's just, there's no sound. There's nothing coming. I couldn't get a hold of anybody. I'm posting on Facebook. I couldn't figure it out. Well, the photographer comes over, rings up their DJ buddy, and then just pushes it over. It was like the, uh, it was the channels th that are on the front of your decks. So, you know, it had to be on like PC or line. That's all it was. It's and always a button. It's always a button. So what that it's always a button obviously is to learn my equipment, but I do learn through trial and error, <laughs> you know, by something happening and then me learning, like I learn a lot that way. But I, I used to call my dad for help because like, he's a sound guy and he was in a band and stuff. He had like a wedding band. That was my go-to. But then I finally built my network of people that I can call if I should be in that situation. So I have like my office team of people that I call with different problems that I'm having. But I also give myself a lot of time because of all the stuff that I used to go through. But yeah, that was, oh my God, the worst anxiety ever. Stretch pants thing that did happen, but it was just my shirt that I forgot. So I had to wear a, like I had like a gear shirt. Like I forget what company it was, but I had to wear that with like a fancy skirt to a wedding and it was just at a cabin. So that was fine. But yeah, <laughs> holy crap. 
holy crap, the ceremony's starting and I can't. Oh my it. gosh. Thank you, photographer friend. <laughs> so it's I, the worst. Uh, one of my first gigs, one of the first weddings I did was at a VFW. Um, so I'm just going to paint a picture by saying that. Um, I was set up on a six foot banquet table. I don't even know if they had the linen on it, to be honest. <laughs> I, <laughs> I had my two speakers on either side and the groomsmen, all of them would not stop heckling me and hitting on me all night long. Um, it got to the point where they were so trash and they kept coming over so often. One of them like came over and was like leaning on the table. And then because he was intoxicated, fell over. He was a big dude. And so he fell over. And when he fell over, he knocked my speaker stand oh, and the leg of the six foot table over at the same time. <sighs> so like in my mind, I had to choose between saving a speaker or saving the you know, whatever. And I don't, I don't even remember which one it was, but I'll fast forward to the end of the night. They continued to get so even more intoxicated that a fight broke out in front of the VFW and the cops got called. Uh, wow. Open bar. I was like, seriously, I never want to do this again. Mm -hmm. What's a VFW? <laughs> Yeah, me too. Me you know too. What? I don't even know what it stands for. Let me Google it. Oh, um, okay. So if you Google it, it says Veterans of Foreign Wars. It literally okay. is just like a building. It literally is just like a building. And I, I think back in the day, it used to be just like a gathering place for veterans. It's a social yeah. club. Yeah, it's like a fire hall, uh, an Italian club, you know, those private clubs that you have to be a member of. And then to increase their revenue, they rent out the space for different events. Oh, that's yeah. interesting. You guys didn't know that. There is such a difference between East Coast, West Coast. But mm. it's not, like I say BFW because it is not a fancy wedding venue. Like it's not, it is the complete opposite of like four seasons in a Ritz-Carlton. Yeah. Yeah, it's affordable. Y yes. Got it. Um, that was DJing one of my... Um, one of my uh, like bigger lounge gigs in Laguna Beach. I was super stoked for it, you know, and I was excited about it. And about 45 minutes into my set, one of my turntables just went out, just done. No signal, no thing, no nothing. And you know, in a lounge, it's like going, you're like, mm -hmm. you're mixing, you're mixing, you're mixing. So thankfully my mentor had taught me how to put it in internal mode on one side and just, so I would mix on one, once I got it in and the song was playing, I'd flip it to the other side, which was internal, hit the crossfader, and then, so I kept mixing on the same turntable that was working, and then flipping it over to the one that was internal mode. And that was like a solid piece of advice, because if I didn't know that, I would have been absolutely in trouble. Mm -hmm. That was my holy shit moment. Can I say that? <laughs> holy crap moment, sorry. <laughs> oh, oh gosh. Uh, you know, I didn't even realize that a turntable could go out because I am always on a uh, hundred percent. I don't know. Okay. I'm going to sound very uneducated right now, but I, I have always worked on a unit that is a whole unit. It's never been like an S9 and then turntables or S9 and CDJs. So it's just been, if it goes out, the whole thing's going out. Yeah. It's a controller. Yeah. yeah. I'm yeah, and there's a benefit to that. I, I that day I thought I'm never gonna DJ with my turntables ever again because there's way too many things that can happen, and this is never gonna happen to me again. But of course, it's like driving a stick shift. Like I love the turntable, so I go back. But it was oh, not. Okay. I love that. Like I just have a I have a flashback in my head of like Fast and Furious, like badass like DJ Aww. B Selecta. Oh, I love Aww. it. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. That was my favorite. Yeah. Okay, so let's do the next topic. We were, I want to hear run that's oh crap. Moment. Okay, oh, oh, quick. Oh, that's right. Okay, give us an oh crap. Mine, mine's quick. Um, so I was DJing out on the coast at an art fair, DJing and seeing this event. Day was going great, beautiful weather, everything. Towards the end of the event, the wind picked up, a speaker flew over, it wasn't mine, and my laptop literally flew off the table. And I had a little chip in my screen, and it came out of nowhere. Um, I couldn't catch it. Like, yeah. So no one was hurt. There was just a little chip in my screen, but that was kind of like, like, whoa. <laughs> yeah. What did you Honestly, do? Honestly, yeah. What did, what did you do? 
it was the end where like everyone's like okay it's time to wrap it up like booths were flying over and it was like an art craft fair too so there was like fragile booths and it's just like came out of nowhere <laughs> the wind yeah, yeah. girl yeah that's uh, that. I'm like I'm like hold on, hold on one moment pause let me pick my mouth up off the floor over here <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a great topic to talk about, but I do feel way inside from all of the stories. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I just wanted I, to go I, smooth. I had another wild event where I was DJing for Stephen Marley, Bob Marley's son, and it was like one of the biggest gigs of my life. And like the sound check was taking forever, ever. They shoved me in the corner behind the, the sound booth guy, like no one could see me, and like his daughter came up and like, she was nice and she's awesome. She's actually a really rad DJ. And uh, she was, we made friends and then like all these dreadies were coming up and like, Oh, what gear do you have? Like acting like they were going to play. And I'm like, Oh my God, there was like all this anticipation for this gig and we're running out of time. I literally got to play three songs, but it was like really an ocean oh moment. Like what is happening? Like everyone's coming at me. Like they're sound checking forever. Like, is this even going to happen? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Just to stand out wild time easy oh my gosh i can't believe you dj'd for bob marley's son right now yeah that's dope awesome. and shaggy that was a huge one i got it open for shaggy they actually had me on the stage for that one so Goals. yeah Goals. fun stuff, <laughs> fun, fun stuff. <laughs> yeah. i mean you, you talk about like being literal terrified <laughs> <laughs> yeah super <laughs> It's a lot of stress. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. we're, we're in a position where we cannot make mistakes really because you're live, you know, yeah. you can't, you have to know how to get yourself out of it. And there is just that feeling you get, at least for me, where it's your whole body gets hot and it just rushes through you and you're like, okay, what do I have to do? And you know, the, the biggest thing I think as far as technicality and such is the process of elimination. You have to just start, like you yeah. said, baby, it's always a button, the process of elimination. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, it's it's rough, man, because we're live. <laughs> like mm -hmm. so rough. And trying to stay calm and trying to stay like collected yeah. and be like, it's fine, and I'm gonna figure this out, it's fine. Mm -hmm. But inside you're like, oh my gosh, what is wrong? What is what is wrong? And I have to fix this. I freeze. I try to like get myself out of that moment. And it always works. Don't you always fix it? Ever all those stories that we just shared, doesn't it always work out though, right? Yeah, thank goodness. It does. <laughs> Thank yeah, God. True that's story. The industry, yeah. that's the entertainment industry for you. We all got that. Mm -hmm. And it's funny because, you know, like we said, this was, we didn't know that this could be a career, right? So one of my last questions is going to be, was, is D, what, blah, 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 let me rewind. <laughs> was DJing supposed to be your original career goal or was it something different? So that's when we flip it on you, Kristen. We're going to ask you two lies and one truth. And we want you to yeah. tell us your careers that you considered, the path that you were maybe going down before you turned big, bad DJ, female DJ, yeah. DJ rock. So you got this lined up for us? Two lies, one yeah. truth. Okay. So no, the goal was not to be a DJ nor own a DJ business. So here is my two lies, one truth. Okay. Um, I wanted to be a marine biologist focusing on killer whales and sea turtles. I wanted to work at an advertising agency in New York City where I had the highest corner office in a sky rise. Or I wanted to be an entertainment publicist with a concentration on bands. Hmm. Girl, why'd you get it? You picked all these. Like you're in Florida, so of course the marine biology thing. <laughs> and like I'm having a flashback right now of, of DJ Collective talks. Um, don't cheat, Beth. <laughs> I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. I'm, I don't know. I don't know. I'm going to say three. Three. Entertainment. What do you guys think? Okay, so um, for those of you watching, um, uh, DJing was not my first choice as a career. And so was it marine biologist with a concentration on killer whales and sea turtles to work at an advertising agency in NYC? and be in the highest corner office in a sky rise or entertainment publicist with a concentration on bands. One, two, or three, go. I'm saying one. Well, I got, well, I got one, one, and I got two threes. What do I have in the chat over here? Nothing yet. Okay, yeah, so yeah. actually it's two. 
what? The most obvious. I was going to pick two. But, 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 but what I will say is I totally have the same mindset as B Selecta. These actually were all a career choice at one point in my life. In middle school, I'm like, I want to be a marine biologist. I did a, this whole sea turtle report. And then as I got older, I'm like, I'm not like the classes I have to take. So this <laughs> <laughs> um, when I got into college, I wanted to be an entertainment publicist because a lot of my marketing and PR projects um, were for made up things. And one of the things that it was, I made up a band. And so that was like my thing. Then once I got to the end of college, I'm like, oh my God, like I can totally see myself in New York city, boss, babe, like running this at the top of this highest sky rise in the corner office. Like to me, that was just like the, I, I just always had that in my mind of like, I don't know, to me, New York city was like, oh, I love New York. I don't know. I don't know. There was just something magical about it. Yes, there is. There is. Now I'm mm -hmm. I'm kind of doing two of those, not the third. I don't want anything to do with biology or anything like that. So, <laughs> well, you, know, exactly. you know what I mean? So you yeah. do kind of have that love surrounding you with nature. And the other two, man, I mean, they kind of were the building blocks to still where you got. So I'm anxious to see what you two wanted to do and if it kind of relates to where you're at now. Yeah, I um so I was like Kristen when I was little I wanted to be a marine biologist too, which is kind of cool. Oh, um, oh my gosh. Yeah, totally. Um and I didn't live anywhere near the ocean, but I dreamt about it. Um but no, I actually I got my first like job was at a record store, like a music store. It wasn't record store, they sold CDs and cassette tapes, but ever since that job, I wanted to be an A&R rep for a major label. That's what I wanted to do for almost until I came to LA. And I sat in the office of the VP of a &R for Sony Records. Wow. And I was like, okay, this is my dream. I'm gonna go meet the dude that's doing what I want. Yeah. And I left there, my dreams were destroyed. I was like, I don't wanna, I can't, I can't live this life. I'm not gonna be able to do this. And then I was lost until I found DJing. Because music's been my life. So I didn't know what to do if music wasn't the picture. That's so crazy. Yeah. I'm super thankful I found DJing. Never, ever thought about being a DJ. Right. Thank ever. you, Dirk, at AR that shattered your dreams. <laughs> What's that? I said thank you to the jerk at A&R that shattered your dreams. Or not well, it, it, was, it wasn't even that, honestly, Jess. It was like I really got a clear picture of what that life was going to be. He was fine. But okay. he lived half the year in L.A., half the year in New York. You know, he was just he lived and breathed his job. Yeah. And and I also knew I wanted to be a mother one day and I knew I couldn't do both. That day I left knowing I couldn't do both and I would have to choose between that kind of a career or having a family. Yeah. Wow. How about you run that? Oh boy. Well, you know, I wanted to be everything really, but I knew whatever I was doing, I would need to be around music. And I also wanted to heal people. So um, I do believe that we heal by bringing music to people. And also I had a very interesting psychic reading two years ago, and I recently listened back to it. And she was saying that I would be healing people by giving them a platform to share their stories. And that by me, I would be sharing my stories just as much as they would be. So like, ironically, my podcast and my online show, so it's all kind of coming true. So as far as a career, you know, I really started with um, making my clothing and selling clothes at concerts, so I could be at the concert. And then that turned into DJing. So I think I knew all along music was going to be there and music was going to be like my own medicine and then my medicine that I'd share with others. But I didn't, I didn't think like of it as a career when I was younger. I mean, I did meet China, which was a video DJ on MTV when I was young. And so she was the first and only female DJ I'd ever seen. And, um, but I didn't even really think of it as a career back then, like knowing her. <laughs> so, yep. That's, that's my story. Awesome. That's awesome. That's I awesome. love how those two are coming together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and you wanted to know you. 
I like it that you want it to be everything and like look at how much you've done. You know, like, <laughs> like yes, and you're still doing it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, hey, if I would have listened to my seven year old self, I think I would have got here a lot faster. But when I was seven, I had a band called the IQ Party Patrol because <laughs> I'm smart. <laughs> And our first single was called Passion is in Control of Me. <laughs> oh my God. Like music's always been a part, like violin stuff, right? Um, used to put on like shows at my house. But anyways, when I was in college, I was going, my, my degree was uh, PR or was corporate communication and public relations. And where I wanted to take that was I wanted to be an event planner. I want it to be the one that put on like the after parties for the Oscars, the Golden Globes, like all of those big shows. I wanted to get there. I even did an internship in New York City because, you know, that's where I thought like I got to go there. I got to try it out. So I kind of got into the corporate world. Not so much. I didn't spend enough time climbing the ladder to get to an event planner position. So I went back to school and got my master's in teaching because I love kids creativity. And my mom's a teacher. So why not? I did really well in that. And then I was teaching and I just was like, I wasn't feeling it, you know? It's like, I loved it, but not all of it. So that's when I decided after I had, well, I didn't think event planning was conducive to a family lifestyle. Um, kind of like you, you know, be select. It was just like, well, really, am I gonna be gone and partying on the weekends? And little did I know, you know, that DJing, it is kind of event planning when I'm doing these weddings. So I still get that and I really hone in on that, but it's super conducive to a family because I can make my schedule, you know what I mean? And it's just, it's crazy. But I'm happy that I still get that event planning thing because it's like chaos makes me calm. So yes. when, it's not, <laughs> when it's somebody else's chaos, I'm like, oh. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Yeah. So I want to start wrapping things up. You know, we've talked uh, uh, about all the way backs on Way Back Wednesday. And, you know, now starting from the bottom, now we're here if you know what I mean. Um, so I want to go around and each of us just share one word to describe where you are right now in your DJ career. Obviously, we know that this is a difficult year in general, but I want to keep it positive, just kind of looking back and thinking, okay, where were you five years ago, 10 years ago, and you know, not knowing that you'd ever be where you are now. So one word to describe this year. Who wants to go first? Go. Shift. Ah, Ooh. okay. Tell me about that. It's just a transition. I can feel it. It's a transition time. And I'm not saying that I'm transitioning out of music or out of DJing or anything. It's almost been a decade and I just feel a very substantial shift happening. And we talked about it before. Um, but that would be my one word for sure. It, there's a shift happening and I'm excited to see what it's what what is going to come out of it definitely yep. shift mm -hmm. i love that for me i love that jess you ready for this so i started off saying uneducated now totally educated i feel educated yes. and to me knowledge is power and it makes me not feel self-conscious so i'm so excited about that <laughs> and i love see it, it. I see it. I see your confidence. I, I mean, you obviously killed it when I saw you two years ago, but I've seen you kind of grow in just the way that you want to grow. And it is, it's really freaking cool. Thank you. Yep. All right. DJ, run that. Um, stretching. <laughs> stretching. Stretching. Huh? stretching. I like that. I thought you said stressing. Like, like, no. no, like stretching into like net, like pivoting, like the shift, the pivoting, stretching, like growth, like growing and pushing through, like stretching through into like new creative levels of like really got to get creative and like re-strategize what is going to happen this next, going on, like in the future, because uh, yeah, we're kind of forced to. <laughs> yeah. I love that. I had to think like really hard about this one. And this is actually probably my favorite question of today because, you know, as in my mind, I have been reflecting a lot over the last 10 years of RDJ Rocks. I started putting together a timeline of a word for every single year in the last 10 years. And so my word of 2020 is perseverance. And for me, I have really spent the last five years in DJing and business, really, really building a foundation of culture and process and finance and operations. I mean, and for obvious reasons, I just wanted to be a really awesome 
badass female DJ company, but, but unintentionally, I feel like over the last 10 years, the first five was just tons of failures, failure after fair failure, trial, trial and error and things like that. But really the last five years of building a strong structure to prepare us for whatever's next. And, you know, I've, I've gone through a couple of different cycles of how I want our business model to work and what kind of fuels my soul. And so um, I'm actually really excited because, you know, I have a bunch of irons in the fire and I can reimagine what this looks like for the future. So uh, perseverance and I am freaking pumped. That is all, folks. Woo. <laughs> yeah girl nice. you're you're nice. my biggest inspiration right there oh i but love you <laughs> um so for everybody that's watching we want you guys to be a part of this and have fun with us so we want you to get on the way back wednesday dj train so uh in the comments we want you to post a picture of yourself from way back and one word that describes your first year of DJing and hashtag it way back Wednesday, hashtag QSC, hashtag play out loud. When the ladies and I get off, we're going to go post our pictures. This should be hilarious. I fully uh, expect all of you to make fun of me. Um, but yeah, we're going to go post our way back pictures. You guys go post yours. Give us one word. Thank you guys so much for joining us. This was a blast this time and hopefully we'll get to see you soon. Ladies, any last pieces of parting words for the audience today post them on instagram i don't know if you can post here i don't know if you can let's have them post your picture on instagram and hashtag it hashtag way back wednesday dj so let's oh, do it oh that's a good idea you want us to do it on let's stories it. um yes no if yes, you want i am it. not posting my way back picture my feed <laughs> <after mine. laughs> my current brand Okay, girl. No, I totally feel you. <laughs> but I'll also post it in these comments too. So if you guys want to have a little laugh, you're more than welcome. Let's do it both ways. So yeah, if they want to take it to Insta, take it to Insta. Let's check all the hashtags and see what content you guys put out there. And then also in the comments too. Yeah, I love it. Thank you, QSC. Thank you everybody for watching. Once again, I'm Kristen. We've got DJ Jess, DJ Runda, and DJ B Selecta wrapping up another edition of Play Out Loud with QSC. Thank you guys. Bye, ladies. Bye.